Okay, welcome back. Uh, this time we are going to talk about some nice examples of polynomials. So, this whole theory of polynomials is uh, you know the general theory is of course, very nice, but uh, what makes it especially nice is the, the existence of many examples with uh, some very special properties and so on. Okay. So, there are uh, a, a very large number of examples of, of, of nice classes of polynomials. I am just going to talk about two of them just to give you a flavor of uh, what is out there. So, the first thing I will talk about are what are called Chebyshev polynomials. sometimes called the Chebyshev polynomials of the first kind, there is also a second kind. Now, where do these, these uh, arise from? So, to sort of better appreciate this, what one needs to recall is a, a little bit of identities from trigonometry. So, here is one of them the double angle formulas. So, if you are trying to find cosine of 2 theta, then here is the, uh, the well known formula for it, it is 2 cos square theta minus 1. Now, of course, there is more if you try to find cosine of 3 theta. So, theta is some angle, this is well again a formula that is probably also rather well known 4 cos cube theta minus 3 cos theta. Similarly, cos of 4 theta if you wish can be computed from cos 2 theta by thinking of it as cos of 2 times 2 theta. So, that is going to be I guess 2 cos square 2 theta minus 1, but I am also going to further write this out cos, cos 2 theta is again some, some expression in terms of cos theta. So, this is 2 times 2 cos square theta minus 1 the whole squared minus a 1. Okay. So, the point being that uh, of course, I am you know I could expand this out a little bit more. The final answer is going to be some expression which is a, a, a combination of powers of cos theta okay, and so on. So, you, you keep going uh, the key thing is that if you write cos of n theta for any n 5 theta, 6 theta, 7 theta and so on they can all be written as some polynomial in cos theta. Okay. So, the key point here is uh, let n be any natural number then cosine of n theta is in fact some polynomial can be written as a polynomial polynomial in cos theta. So, observe what we mean by that is the following cosine of n theta can be written as some polynomial called T n evaluated at cos theta. So, T n of x is some polynomial in place of x you plug in cos theta what you will get is exactly the value of cosine n theta. Okay. So, let us see what do we mean here in, in our examples. If you put uh, n equals 2 consider the polynomial T 2 of x which is 2 x squared minus 1. Now, if you plug in x equals cos theta then that is going to give you 2 cos squared theta minus 1 which is exactly cosine of 2 theta. 
right. Similarly, you take the second polynomial that I wrote down there 4 x cubed minus 3 x, you plug in x equals cos theta, it is 4 cos cubed minus 3 cos and that is exactly cosine of 3 theta, right. So, this is what we mean in general, there is a there is a sequence of polynomials t 0, t 1, t 2, t 3, t 4 and so on such that in place of x you put cos theta, what you get is exactly the value of cosine m theta. So, first let us see why is this this statement even true, why is it true that cosine of n theta can be written as a polynomial in cos theta and also uh, simultaneously what these polynomials T n look like. So, to do this, so let us recall the identity uh, for addition of angles. So, I am going to, to write the following identity down let us look at cosine of n plus 1 theta. Okay, so, that is just cosine of n theta plus theta. So, it is like cos of a plus b. So, the addition formula says it is cos of a times cos of b minus sin of a sin of b. And what we will do with this is the following. So, it is just a, a, a small trick to manipulate this. So, let us add and subtract a, a cos n theta cos theta, the first term. So, I will do the following, I will rewrite the first term, I will add another copy of the first term and subtract out what I have added. Okay. So, what does this manipulation give us? Well, if you observe what it does to the to the, the last two terms now. So, this is cos of n theta cos theta and this is becomes minus of cos n theta cos theta plus sin n theta sin theta. Okay. So, let me just do it right here. So, this is a minus and that is a minus. So, I can put them together with a plus. but that is again the identity, but now for the difference of the angles. So, that is now cos of a minus b. So, this becomes minus cos of n theta minus theta. So, that is n minus 1 theta. Okay. So, what does this tell you? Well, it says that if you look at this polynomial t n plus 1 x. So, let us just, uh, let us look at the left hand side. If we grant that it is a polynomial t n plus 1 evaluated at cos theta, that is the left hand side. The right hand side is, well what is it? Uh, again I am going to write cos n theta as a polynomial in cos theta. So, that is 2 times T n evaluated at cos theta times cos theta minus, what is this again cos of n minus 1 theta. So, this, this is just T n minus 1 evaluated at cos theta. Okay, so, all I am doing is, so for the, for the moment just take this for granted that cos of n theta can be written as some polynomial evaluated at cos theta. I am trying to find out what property those polynomials satisfy. Because we have this identity and because of all these manipulations, this polynomial T n plus 1 must be equal to 2 times T n of cos theta times cos theta minus T n minus 1 evaluated at cos theta. Okay. So, these two things are, are in fact the same. So, what does this tell you about, so observe that we have really plugged in cos theta in place of x. So, replace all the cos thetas by x's. In other words, it says that this polynomial T n plus 1 evaluated at x is in fact 2 x. So, the cos theta here is an x minus T n minus 1 of it. Yeah, and this is valid for what values of n? Well, here I need at least n equals uh, 1 in order for all this to make sense because I am sort of looking at at least cos of 0 over here. Okay, so, T n plus 1 of x is just 2 x T n x minus T n minus 1 x. This is valid for all n at least 1. Okay. So, in fact, these polynomials T n s that we are we are trying to uh, understand here 
are given by this very simple formula here. Now, this is not quite like a usual formula, this is what is called a recurrence relation. So, we would call typically a thing like this a recurrence. because it gives you a formula for T n plus 1 in terms of lower T n's in terms of T n and T n minus 1. It does not give an explicit formula for the T n itself, right, but just in terms of the lower T n's, but that is still quite a uh, quite a valuable piece of information because it allows us to quickly compute the first few values. So, observe, so let us just use that to, to uh, write out this table here. So, observe what are these. Uh, well, I should also have written the, the earlier polynomials. So, I had, so here I have written T 2 4 x cube minus 2 x. So, observe in fact, we also know what T 1 and T 0 are. T 1 is just, T 1 is supposed to be what? Uh, if you plug in cos theta as a polynomial in cos theta, right. So, that is just the polynomial x itself. So, T 1 of x is just x. T 0 of x is I plug in in place of n I plug in a 0. So, it is cos of 0 that is just the constant 1. So, in fact, T 0 of x is the constant polynomial 1. T 1 of x is the polynomial x. The next guy is 2 x square minus 1, 4 x cube minus 2 x and so on. So, now let us just calculate So, maybe uh, okay, let us just see whether these this recurrence relation actually holds true. So, what does the recurrence relation say? T 2 we should already be able to figure out T 2 from there. So, remember this is the recurrence relation T n plus 1 of x is 2 x T n x minus T n minus 1 x. So, I will plug in n equals 0 here or rather n equals 1 here. I will get that T 2 of x is 2 x T 1 of x minus T 0 of x. Okay, so, let us let us do it there. So, T 2 should actually have been 2 x times T 1 minus T 0 and this is what 2 x times x minus T 0. So, 1 that is exactly 2 x square minus 1. Let us compute T 3 in a similar fashion. T 3 according to the recurrence relation should have been 2 x times T 2 of x minus T 1 of x. Okay, so, let us use this to calculate it is 2 x times T 2 of x is 2 x squared minus 1, T 1 of x is x. So, that should be 4 x cubed minus 2 x minus x which is minus 3 x. Right? So, observe that the well known values of T 2 and T 3 can actually be obtained in terms of the preceding values by using the recurrence relation. So, similarly if you did T 4 it would just be you take 4 x cube minus 3 x you multiply it by a 2 x and you subtract out the previous term. So, T 4 should actually be 2 x times T 3 minus T 2 okay, and of course, one can just work that out in full see if it matches up with the thing that we already had. Okay, so, that is uh, uh, these polynomials here are what are called the Chebyshev polynomials. So, Chebyshev. So, these polynomials for n equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, it is really a sequence of polynomials. Now, what are the main properties that we have sort of encountered so far? Well, the first thing is that they satisfy a recurrence relation that is one of their that is one of its most important properties T 0 is 1, T 1 is x and all higher values and if you wanted to know what T n plus 1 was, you could get it in terms of the two preceding values of T. So, you multiply T n by 2 x and you subtract T n minus 1. This is for all n 
at least one. In other words, T 2, T 3 and so on can are the ones for which you can apply this reconciliation. So, that is the, the first property that they are given by a reconciliation. The second interesting property is sort of obvious when you look at the table, they are 1, the first few polynomials are 1 x 2 x squared minus 1 4 x cube minus 2 x and so on. In fact, uh, the degrees of these polynomials sort of grow by 1 at each step. So, in general T 0 is of degree 0, T 1 is of degree 1 and so on, T n is of degree n. Okay. In fact, further if you sort of look at the table again, you will notice that T n of x looks like the following, it is some multiple of x power n plus of course, lower powers of x plus right plus linear combinations of lower powers, but this leading coefficient the, the coefficient of x power n is in fact, a power of 2 it is 2 power n n minus 1. Okay. So, here for instance, I have uh, 2, 2 power 1, this guy is 2 squared, this is 2 cubed and so on. So, this is true for let us see what values of n at least 1, it looks like this for n at least 1. Okay. So, even the leading power is very easy to determine in this case. And what are the other properties that uh, one notices from just the table is that T n of x only contains. So, for instance, uh, T 2 only has x squared and the constant term, it does not have a, a, a an x term. Similarly, T 3 has x cubed and x, it does not contain x squared or a constant. In other words, uh, if you take T n and if n is even it will only contain even powers of x and if n is odd it only contains odd powers of x. Okay. So, I am sort of stating various interesting properties without proof really, but each of them can be proved uh, rather easily. So, let us see T n of x is uh, only has even powers of x. If n is even and similarly only has odd powers of x if n is odd. Okay. So, it is it is it has that very nice property. Now, here is the here is the rather interesting property of the of the Chebyshev polynomials. So, it, they have a really interesting behavior under composition. So, notice that I mentioned in one of the earlier lectures that here is an operation you can perform on on polynomials, you take f and g two polynomials, you compose them, you com compute f of g of x, what you get is another polynomial whose degree is the product of the degrees. right? But the thing with the Chebyshev polynomials is if you take the Chebyshev polynomial T n and you compose it with the Chebyshev polynomial T m. Okay. So, this is a degree n polynomial which you are sort of composing with a degree m polynomial. So, what are n and m here? So, they are just greater than equal to 0. What this gives you is well in general it is a polynomial of degree n times m. Right. So, that is the best you can say, but in fact it turns out to be the Chebyshev polynomial itself of degree n m. Okay. So, it is rather interesting that when you compose two Chebyshev polynomials, the answer is again a Chebyshev polynomial. Okay. And so, let us just prove this because the proof is actually very, very easy and just a direct consequence of the, the trigonometric definition. So, observe that on the right hand side. So, let us calculate what is T n m of instead of x I will put cos theta, so that it is uh, it leads back to the definition. If I plug in x equals cos theta on the right hand side, T n m of cos theta is by definition just whatever you get when you compute cos of n m theta. So, you take cos of this multiple of theta, you write it in terms of cos theta that is exactly this guy T n m of cos theta, but 
this thing here can actually be thought of as cos of n times m theta. And notice that in fact, we did this initially when we were trying to compute cosine of 4 theta, we said 4 theta is 2 times 2 theta. So, if you know the answer for cosine 2 theta, you can use that to do the, the next calculation. So, this is similar if you want to compute cosine of n m theta, it is cosine of n times m theta and think of this as your as your new angle, m theta as your new angle. So, it is like trying to find cosine of n times an angle, but that is again given by the Chebyshev polynomial. To find cosine of n times alpha, you just have to compute T n of cosine alpha, where alpha now here is m theta. Okay. And of course, again cosine of m theta by definition is just what you get when you plug in T m of cos theta. Okay. So, just this cosine of a multiple of theta the, the definition is what sort of gives you this property that T n m evaluated at cos theta is the same as T n of T m of cos theta. Okay. And of course, from that you conclude that these two things are really the same T n m T m n m of x is same as T n of T m of x. So, that is really the proof of this this composition property of Chebyshev polynomials. And here is the here is the final property that I want to talk about uh, what are the roots of T n. If you want to figure out what the roots of this polynomial are, well, here is what you have to do. You must ask uh, what are the values of x which will make T n of x 0, right. So, we are trying to ask if I want to find x for which T n of x is 0, what is that? What does it tell me about x? So, as usual, let us plug in x equals cos theta. So, that sort of gives us a natural handle on the problem. So, if you put think of x as cos theta. T n of cos theta, let us compute it, it is just well we know by definition it is cosine of n theta. And so, the question really becomes for what values of cos theta would cos of n theta be 0. So, to find the root it is really the same as trying to solve this problem. We want to figure out values of theta for which cosine of n theta is 0. And of course, that is a very very easy problem right. So, we know exactly when cosine becomes 0. So, what are the roots? Uh, these are exactly. So, what are the values of theta? So, we are we are now looking at let us see. So, the roots. So, let me just write down the statement. So, the roots of Tn of x are the following numbers cosine of theta, where theta is basically of the form 2k minus 1 divided by 2k times pi. k is a number between 1 and n. So, the claim is these are the values of x for which T n of x would be 0. Okay. So, let us see if you plug in let us just check that this is true if you take x to be this value. So, let us just check suppose I plug in. So, what is T n evaluated at this number for instance. So, you take k to be any, anything between 1 and n and let us try to evaluate T n at cos of this number. So, again by definition this is nothing but uh, sorry this is 2 n. So, by definition T n of uh, T n of cos of something is just cos of n times that angle. So, it is n times this angle which is 2 k minus 1 by 2 n times pi, but now the n cancels the n what this means is this is cosine of 2 k minus 1 which is an odd number times pi by 2 right. But cosine of an odd multiple of pi by 2, so it is either pi by 2, 3 pi by 2, 5 pi by 2 and so on cosine of odd multiples of pi by 2 is exactly 0. So, this is in fact 0. Okay. So, each of these numbers if you take x to be this number and evaluate T n on this number what you are guaranteed to get is in fact a 0. Okay. So, here are the roots of, of uh, the Chebyshev polynomials. So, what that means is in fact the following uh, it implies the following fact that you can actually 
since you know all the roots, remember we have done this again once before, if you know the roots, you can factorize the polynomial. You can write T n of x as what is it? Each of these roots will, will contribute a factor. So, this is just product of x minus cosine of 2 k minus 1 by 2 n times pi. So, it is x minus this, where k runs from 1 to n. So, these are the n roots, n distinct roots of, of this polynomial T n. So, each of these will in fact be a factor of, of T n. So, we have this, but of course, there could be a constant in front, right. So, these will not capture the, the constant in front, but again remember that was one of the things I said uh, T n of x looks like 2 to the n minus 1 times x power n. So, this should really be uh, the constant in front is exactly the, the leading coefficient 2 to the n minus 1. Okay, so, here is the, the final fact which you more or less can deduce from from the knowledge of the roots. Okay, so, this, this statement is true for n at least 1. Here is an explicit expression okay. and it is uh, rather remarkable that this expression holds because just looking at that sequence of polynomials you know whatever uh, 2 x square minus 1, 4 x cube minus 3 x and so on it seems rather remarkable that uh, when you factorize it, what you will get will be cosines of some strange angles. Okay. So, it is a, it's a rather remarkable thing. So, let me just end this by just observing. If you look at T 4 of x, so just plugging in this formula, here is the example. If you take T 4 of x, it is in fact 2 cube, that is n minus 1 times x minus what are we going to get cosine of pi by 8 x minus cosine 3 pi by 8 5 pi by 8 and 7 pi by 8. So, that is the formula for T 4 of x and of course, you can also explicitly compute it from from that recurrence relation and so on and you will get some some strange formula for it meaning some uh, degree 4 polynomial and it is rather remarkable that that polynomial actually factorizes in this way.